But as we have acted to help those in need, what about the UK government? You know, it is difficult to overstate the calamity of their actions. Back in 2014, the Westminster establishment told us that it was the UK's standing in the world, its economic strength and its stability that made independence impossible. <laughs> now they say it's the UK's isolation, its weakness and instability, the very conditions they created that means change can't happen. As far as Westminster is concerned, it's heads they win and tails we lose, but this time it will not wash. Because what that is delivering for Scotland is this, Brexit, more austerity, homeowners facing real hardship and hundreds of thousands in poverty. Conference, that is not strength and stability, it is chaos and catastrophe. And friends, all of that is on the Tories. But we should remember that their ability to do it has too often been aided and abetted by Labour. In 2014, Labour joined forces with the Tories. They said then that Westminster Tory government was better for Scotland than self-government. And incredibly, they are doing it all over again. It wasn't easy to understand back then. But given everything that has happened since, it is utterly inexplicable now. Take Brexit, imposed on Scotland against our will and doing real lasting damage to our interests, our economy and our young people. Labour is now just as committed to Brexit, a hard Brexit, as the Tories. You know, at least the Tories believe in it. Labour doesn't. <laughs> Yet rather than make the principled argument, which they could actually now win in England, they cower away from it. They abandon all principle for fear of upsetting the apple cart. Bluntly, they are willing to chuck Scotland under Boris Johnson's Brexit bus to get the keys to Downing Street. <laughs> Friends, letting down Scotland, same old Labour.